Let us pray. Heavenly gracious Father, as we gather here this morning to remember the saints that have gone on before us, we ask that you be with each and every one who has lost someone during this past year. We ask that the words that I'm about to speak touch the hearts and minds of people that are here. They may be few, but I think they're powerful, Lord. Um, we ask that you be with each and every one of us this evening, this afternoon as we go home. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today I'm going to be speaking on one of the shortest Bible verses. Anybody know what it is? Jesus wept. John 11, 35. There's only two words, but a lot could be said about them. But I'm only going to cover one topic of it today. Let me start with a familiar story of Jesus and his closest friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And I'll be reading selected verses from John chapter 11. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany. The village, of mother, or the village of Mary and her sister Martha. And this Mary, who was the brother of Lazarus, who lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on, Lord, on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. But Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his, side, at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Here's the verse. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? We see in the gospel accounts that every time Jesus needed to separate from the crowds to rest, he often went to the Bethany to the house of his good friends Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. In fact, you could probably see him there on a Friday night eating pizza with them. You know. One day, Jesus received word that his friend Lazarus was very ill. It took only days for the disease to take the life of Lazarus. But four days after Lazarus' death, Jesus arrived in Bethany to find Mary and Martha weeping over the loss of their brother. So when Jesus does arrive in Bethany, 
Martha is so broken up, she doesn't know what to say. So in one breath, she says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But then in the next breath, she says, but even now, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give you. You have heard that Jesus wept because of his deep love for his friend, Lazarus. The cry of the Lord is proof of his humanity. The tears of Jesus are a sign that he was a human being like us who had emotions, physical needs, and moments of pain. The tears of Jesus are a sign that the master made friends, loved his friends, and still loves them, and suffered as he weeps for them. Jesus weeps with you and for you too. He weeps so we will know mourning is not disbelieving. We weep for many different reasons. Loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of good health, loss of relationships, loss of joy and peace, Loss of direction, the loss and loneliness we experience when, we, when our loved ones don't share our faith. And our losses make us feel hurt, broken, hopeless, lost, and hollow. But no matter what hurt or pain we feel in life, Jesus is right there with us. He is not afraid to meet us in our despair and darkness. He knows that pain will lead us to a greater good. Paul says we don't have to suffer alone because God is the source of all comfort. One of the greatest gifts we can give someone who is hurting or grieving or in pain is our presence and sharing in their suffering. There's a Swedish proverb that says, shared joy is a double joy. Shared sorrow is half sorrow. So grieve, but don't grieve like those who don't know the rest of this story. We are all looking for the good news that through all of our weeping and pain, the Lord will supply us with a new life with God and we will be reunited with our loved ones in heaven. Our Lord Jesus wept, and when you cry, God will dry your tears, hold you, and pick you up again. It's okay to cry while knowing that Jesus will fix it in the end. I want to share with you, and I think I've read this before, uh, a reflection that is in the United Methodist Synod is by Martin Luther King. Is someone here moving toward the twilight of life and fearful of that which we call death? Why be afraid? God is able. Is someone here on the brink of despair because of the death of a loved one, the breaking of a marriage, or the waywardness of a child? Why despair? God is able to give us the power to endure that which cannot be changed. Is someone here anxious because of bad health? Why be anxious? Come what may, God is able. Surely, God is able. I'd like to close with uh, a Psalm, Psalm 30, verses 4 and 5. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. <laughs>